Hey guys, welcome back. So, last time where we left off was the frame is entirely stripped down and I was waiting on a plate to come in. Ta-da! And then we can mock this engine up on the frame, determine where we need to drill holes for that, and then we can finish stripping it down and get everything painted up and then we can go ahead and reassemble after uh and so to be able to do that to be able to mount the engine i need and determine what all i need to modify i also have to go ahead and put on that torque converter so that's where we're going to start here we go all right so i haven't done this before what we're going to do is move some stuff around I'm going to open up this torque converter box, find out just exactly what's in it. proper tooth on it. and locks I'll go ahead and assemble those how many washers are there? there's five washers these are for the for the guard this one is your center shaft bolt go right in there this is the spacer that's supposed to go on back in there thought this assembly was supposed to have that built in but I guess it's just in there so there it is uh, and then there's these guys yep it's hitting right on the end of there so let's go ahead Cut this bad boy off. I already have one up front. Don't need one in the rear. They do this so that you can fill the oil in multiple applications. There we go. Now let's see. Much better. No more hit. Okay, so let's get one of these bolts started. When I go for the final assembly, I'll come through and add some Loctite. out of the way and we can get the frame back up here so we can look at it. So as you can see it used to mount in this location here and what this plate's going to do for us is the motor now needs to mount to this side and I need side to side and forward and back so that I can locate that motor to be able to do that I think what we're going to wind up doing oh, I've 
got a parts kit for that. I'm gonna pause for a second. Found it. So what we need to do is we need to bolt it to the motor first. Get this set up here. Captive slots, captive bolts. The slot ways keep the bolt from turning, and you can just tighten and loosen from above or below if that's the plate mounting location, anyway. So now we can just set this on here. Slide that one over. I don't know if you can see this or not, but I'm doing the best I can. on here. Alright. I got that plate from Hot Rod Mini Bikes. They've got a website that carries all these little extra doodads. Some stuff on there, like that plate, is custom. And there are Chinese knockoffs, but because I'm a business owner. Oh, look at that. That's just what I thought. So, what are we seeing? What we see here is this bar is in the way, which is gonna kind of suck because that also holds the fender on. I think I can probably cut this off right here. It's not its not a cross member, it's not structural. That's what the engine mount does. It holds the spacing of the frame. The tire itself holds the spacing of the frame. The Z axis, the crossing of the two frames is held by both the motor mount and the tire and this crossbar up here, seat crossbars, where they're welded together. So all of that, all this does, all this does is hold the chain guard on and holds the fender on. That's it, that's all that it does. So that being said, it looks like what I'm gonna have to do is lop this off here, take it off here, and that'll take out this section it's hitting on the uh, tensioner plate, so that's gotta come off. And then once that's done, let's turn it around if I can, without knocking everything off. Get a hold of it, spin it, without losing everything. Let's set it up on this side so we can see the back. And it looks like I won't have to do very much. That's all the way forward, and I need it to be able to come an inch back. So to be able to get it to clear and set all the way down, it looks like I'm probably going to have to take out a little bit of this aluminum right back in here. So not very much, just a little bit. I don't think it'll take away from the structure because uh, the, all the strength is here. Uh, I have heard guys say that building a tab to anchor this to the frame is a good idea. I don't know if that's necessary or not though in our app, in our application. Um, yeah, looks like it needs to come down a finger width and that'll be a finger width up into that so we can just kind of angle cut that right there and then that'll sit down flat. So. I'm going to go ahead and do all of that.
right, there we go. That's gonna make us some clearance for that to come in this way. Now we'll be able to set and mark on the torque converter exactly how much we've gotta take off. Oh, that's better. I know, I'm a messy guy. Barely ever clean up after myself. Uh, but I get shit done. So, this is showing me that that is probably the maximum amount of rear travel that we can get. So, this is our height, right here. Now we need to figure out how much forward travel we're gonna get. I mean, obviously it's not a lot. And that's as far forward as we're gonna get. So now we can mark how much of this we need to take off. Right there. And that's as far back as we can go. So anything further over from that line, that direction's gotta come off because I need it to be able to slide towards us. As you can see, it's too far that direction. <laughs> The chain will run in here, and that's gotta come in probably about an inch, looks like, maybe not quite. So, I'll take that off and do that next. Okay, all sharp edges removed. And that's about all I had to take off. So as you can see, I didn't have to notch very much at all. And that should give us the clearance we need inside the frame for this install. Next, I'll get it mocked back up, back in the bike, and we'll figure out where, how much room I have and where the chain needs to line up. And then we'll mark where the plate goes on the on there and then that'll tell us where my my uh, my plate's going to sit and where to drill my holes that clearance that's all the way to the front now I can slide it all the way back it doesn't hit anywhere <laughs>
best way to line up a chain is to use the chain. So at the end there, the chain's turning that way, which tells me that the motor is cocked this way. So it needs to come back over. Pretty much right there is straight. And that's flush with that edge, so should be good to go by flushing the plate up with this far edge, drilling the holes down through for the forward and back adjustment. That's all the way forward right now, up against the weld. So I can determine, I'll probably just slide it to the back because it looks like it's only got oh, three quarters of an inch it can come back. So, yep, I'm gonna take that off the motor, set it where it needs to go, drill the holes and bolt it up. <sighs> Refreshments of the adult kind. Okie dokie, and now I've got where I can drill. Alright, if you guys are ever in need of a center punch and you've got a broken old drill bit laying around, you can use your grinder, sharpen it down to a point, and that's hardened steel. Works great as a center punch. So let's see. Looks like these slots are exactly two inches. We'll make a, a mark center. Close to quarter inch, but a little bit to the inside. you guys but I am a big old fan of step bits this one right here is drilled I don't know thousands of holes and it's still going strong don't even ask me about this drill it's more than 20 years old I picked it up for 170 something dollars off of a tool truck it's a right angle low rpm drill and it's never burned up a bit so I'm using it normally I use my DeWalt but I don't have it with me today so, let's see, I'm going to put you guys where you can see between the bars, and I'm going to start drilling these holes. Okay, so the next thing to do... To drill these holes out to the point where looks like this one's a little bit off uh, hopefully it doesn't mess with us that much I might just oversize that hole just a little bit so that we can get it lined up where it needs to be
So I already did one hole and I'm pushing up as I go. Hopefully I can get it to, to motate a little bit. And so you go down one step at a time until your bit fits. There you go. So now we can check the fit. Like so. Now we've got enough that it'll slide all the way to the end. And that's where we'll start. That's where we'll set our chain. That'll be cranked down right there. And then I'll measure out the chain, mark which links I need to break. And then as that chain stretches, I will be able to move the engine forward to tighten that chain. That's that. These will be somewhere near center. That right there is all the modification that I need to do. Looks like I've still got a little bit of a sharp edge right here. Find something to stick in that hole. Oh, here, look at this. Need to deburr the inside. Done and done. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Cheers. Till next time. break anything.